three phase kit, single phase power. Let's make that work today on Molten Make. You've got your heart set on having one of these big disc sanders. But I don't have three phase power. No problem. You'll hear a lot that buying second-hand equipment is a great way to get tools on the cheap, but often, especially with these big industrial things, they come with three-phase motors. Now, that's not normally something you can run at home, but with the something you can do to fix it. Actually, there's a few things, but let's focus on one today. Now, the things to understand are that there's more than one phase, and there's different voltages. So at least in the UK, most three-phase runs on 415 volts as opposed to the about 230 that you get out of your normal home socket. That proves two challenges. One, you've got to get the same voltage and you've also got to magic up two extra phases. How are you gonna do that? So remember I said that there's a few different ways to do this? Now the method I'm gonna show you using a variable frequency drive only really worked well with things that spin. Now the big spinny thing, that would work. Lay. That'll work. Welder? No, probably not. Bench grinder? Yeah, that'll work. Anvil? It's not powered, don't plug that in. So what I'm saying is that if it's just a single motor, you're probably gonna be able to use a variable frequency drive to get single phase in and three phase out. I'm gonna get it to work. You can just get a new motor. I don't wanna. Well, the other advantage of using a variable frequency drive is that you can vary the frequency at which you drive it. So what? It means you can get variable speed control. Let me show you. Big old bandsaw with step pulleys on the back. Speed control on the front. Look how slow that is. Ooh, so slow. Variable frequency drive. Belt grinder. Belt goes fast. Belt goes slow. Belt goes backwards. Belt goes backwards faster. Oh, so you didn't know why your sander needs to run at a tenth of speed? Yeah, disc changes are much easier. The way you can tell if something is three phase or not is often by looking at the plug. Now, if they come like this with a bare wire, you're looking at, ignoring the earth wire, three separate phases. Now, if it does come with a plug, it's gonna be something heavy duty, a bit like this. Now, single phase plugs can look similar. Don't get confused. It's a bit like one of those ones. If you've got one of those, then you just need a little bit more amperage to be able to run it. If you can't really tell the easiest way to do it, have a look inside. Now this sander has the motor on the inside behind this protective plate, which you still can't see. So um, I'll show you. We have a look inside. The motor's got this bracket on the outside that tells you all the information you need to see if you can run it on single phase. The problem being, if your motor can't run on the voltage you put into your variable frequency drive, then it's not gonna run. So you might have to just get a new motor. Checklist to make sure my bit of kit is gonna work for this method. Dual voltage, same as the stuff that comes out of the wall. Simple thing, basically just a big spinny thing. Perfect, let's go. Power from the wall, somehow. Into the variable frequency drive, magic out into your motor. Simple. The other thing to think about is that this motor has stuff. Ah, see ya. Ah. Right. Gonna be one of them. Damn it! Stuff. Ah, oh, come on. I'll deal with you later. Stuff attached to it. See, wasn't that easy. Stuff like that's there to protect you so that if you unplug the machine while it's switched on, if you plug it back in, it won't be switched on. Safety. But when we use a variable frequency drive, it's gonna take over that safety feature for us. So we're just gonna take it out. Ooh. Ah. With that bit taken out, we've got one end that can go onto a power plug, comes through the case to one end, which we'll put into the variable frequency drive, and the other end connects up to the motor, and once that's together, ah, I'm excited about the next bit where we put it together.
Now we've got everything wired up, it's time to see if it works. I mean, it's only a trial. Look at that! Okay, I'll just quickly turn it off. Okay, it's, it's actually off. Um, I'm going to unplug it. It's unplugged. Uh, have a look in the manual. Right, I, I think I found it. There's a bit about a brake resistor. Um, there's also a, a little bit right down at the bottom here that says if that's not working, then um, the manual can be used as a brake, which is... Uh, I mean, it works, but I think we can fix that. Most variable frequency drives have, at least in the bigger versions, function to use a brake resistor. Now this thing, it's actually for something else, but it'll work really well. The idea is that you can dump some of that electrical energy that's being fed back into the motor as it slows down into the resistor and brake it using electronics. Cool. The eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that we're using that VFD at the front, not the one I showed you earlier on, at the back. And there's a good reason why. It's all about ingress protection. These things at the top, good for cooling, bad for dust. And in a sander, I need something with a bit more protection and fins that you can't focus on exactly. Part of that ingress protection is having cable glands at the bottom so that you can securely mount your cables to your VFD, which is a good thing. Now I know that things work, it's time to make a better mount for that VFD. Uh, this sounds a bit familiar. I think it's in one of Laura's videos. Um, should we maybe try something a bit different? Okay, uh, you pick one of the big I like to make stuff songs. Change it. As you can probably guess, the next step is to TIG up this aluminium into a frame. Now, you don't have to do this with aluminium, I just need a bit of practice, so I thought it's a good opportunity. Fifteen hours of sanding later, got something half usable. Now, stick it in there. I mean, you can't see it, it's, it's a sander. Not too bad, but a little bit of wobble we can probably take out and make it even better. That tube is part of the dust collection system, so luckily, just need to get any dust collection port that's the same size. I can use that to transfer the curve. One thing I am slightly worried about is this bit rattling against that tube, which, while not the worst thing in the world, would be quite annoying. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I talked about this. This is a plastic dipped or plastic coated bit of metal, and it's what I want to do to these bits to prevent them from rattling, which is why I've got the heat treating oven on. I've already had a go at doing this, and here's the first piece. Now, it's not perfect, and I think we can do a little bit better. So rather than using a blowtorch, which was fun, I'm gonna use the oven to heat up the metal part. I've covered it in a heat resistant tape, which they use for powder coating. 
And then once it's hot, I'm gonna dip it in that fluidized plastic and hopefully get a slightly better result. Into the oven. We go. See you soon. We're up to temperature. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed and bring you along. Right, off we go. Into the fluidized bath we go. Apparently about five seconds should do it, six seconds. I had to clean them up a fair bit, but we're done. They look pretty good. The one that went in the oven, I think looks a lot better. But actually between the two of them, there's not that much difference. If I do it again, I'm gonna use the oven method. Probably a slightly lower temperature because I had to clean up some of the tape which had burnt on. Anyway, time to take these onto the bracket and then that's the bracket done. And just like that, here it is. Looks pretty good. Melted a little bit, but not too bad. Now, to put it on the machine. So there's a little bit of room on this side, but I think once the weight of the VFD goes on, it's all gonna work out really nicely. And here we are, mounted up, really solid. Lifts up a little bit, but I haven't even tightened in those bolts yet. Now the slight issue, uh, having drilled the holes for this, uh, oh well, it still actually slows down without the resistor, but this just makes it a little bit faster. So we're gonna carry on, and maybe in the future, I'll find a smaller one of these or just mount it underneath. Onward. Did someone say they were excited for wiring? I thought not. I'm not sponsored, just they make great tools and you need to know about them. Something I like to do when I'm wiring up projects is use these spade connectors. I think it makes a real difference to the project and gives it a really professional look. They're really simple to use. You need to strip the plastic off the wire, and then if you've got a good crimping tool, it makes all the difference. The ratcheting ones are the best. Now, if you think that there's not gonna be enough space, you can use a bootlace ferrule. It looks a bit like the end of a shoelace. Again, a good crimping tool makes a big difference here, and it helps protect the wire. The wiring between the VFD and the motor is quite simple. There is, of course, the earth connection, and then one wire each for each of the phases, known as U, V, and W. Each of these get a full round crimp connector, and then they're screwed down to the relevant post on the motor. Normally, on the underside of the cap, there's a wiring diagram that tells you which of these is U, V, and W, and also how you're meant to connect the bars running between the two sides of the connections in order to get it in either the delta or star configuration. That'll make it run in either the lower voltage or the higher voltage and it's important to get right. You can see here that I just had to connect them straight across. You know what, it just doesn't sit right with me. I've got to put that brake resistor in. Hmm. Maybe do something foolish. Whack it! Whack it! 
Hack it. Okay, let's hack it. Now that's cool. And that's it. It's all you really need to get started using a variable frequency drive to run your three phase equipment on single phase. Now, I need to change the sanding disk before I get this sander up and running, but in the meantime, why not check out one of my other videos? I think this is one you'll like. And you can also follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to day to day. Anyway, catch you on the next one, and thanks for watching. Whack it. Hi James. Uh, I don't know how aggressive or delicate you want me to say this. So I'm gonna give you some options. Whack it! 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 Wh